What's up? It's PJ, aka Fogen, here with a quick tutorial on how to properly loop a sample so that it's on beat and all that shit. All right, first, find the sample. I have an Ableton Live 9 suite project pulled up called Billy Paul Shop. We're going to be sampling Billy Paul, me, and Mrs. Jones. All right, drag it into an audio channel. First thing I'm going to do is deselect warp because chances are Ableton warped it wrong. All right, now that that's deselected, I can go over here and come down here to this view and find my downbeat. So this is, this looks like the downbeat of the song. This looks like where we're going to want our loop to start. Once I have that, I'm going to reselect warp. Great. And good. So Ableton picked this as beat one. If it didn't for some reason, you would right click this and hit set one, one, one here. And Ableton also has not thrown in any extra warp markers, but if for some reason it did, you would right click this and hit warp from here straight just to get clean canvas, blank template, tabula rasa. All right, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to listen through the sample and try to identify where the beginning of the fifth bar would be because we're going to want to warp the first four bars. All right, let's give a listen. All right, song's too fresh. Right here, this transient, which is the little blip of sound at the beginning of a, a drum or something, any sound. Um, this transient is the beginning of the fifth bar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a warp marker here by double clicking, and then it looks like I'm thinking in double time according to Ableton. So this is actually gonna be an eight bar loop, uh, four bar loop, eight bar loop. It just depends on what you're calling a BPM. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drag this over to nine. So this will be the beginning of the ninth bar instead of the beginning of the fifth bar. But what it does accomplish is it gives us this nice eight bar loop theoretically on beat. So if we're looking at the transients here as to how well they line up with our measure markers, it looks like it's close. What we're gonna do is highlight this whole thing and you're gonna hit Command L or Control L. All right, and now it's looped. We go up here to our um, arrangement view and you can see the looping happening. So let's turn on the metronome, give a listen, see how close we are. Start from the beginning. All right, that's, that's kind of close. Now what we have to do is we have to go in and clean it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and find the transients on the downbeats of the different bars. So here's one. I'm gonna double click, add a warp marker, and drag that to the beginning of the second bar. I'm gonna do this for all of these measures here. Just quick. Uh oh, make sure you're right on beat when you add a warp marker. Doesn't have to move a lot to sound off. Alright, so now I'm also gonna go back and do that for every half measure because I know that those are sound like hats that are straight on rhythm, I guess a ride or something, some kind of symbol, but they should be on the beat. So I go in here, double clicking and adjusting very slightly. All right, this looks a lot better. So now when we listen with the metronome, it should sound more on beat. Let's take a listen. Great. Sounds like a loop. Everything sounds a lot more on beat than it was. All right. Uh, only a couple more things to address. This is the master tempo of the project, and Live just kind of assigns that based on what it thought the track's native BPM was. So it looks like it's actually, well, it's actually, let's see. It's calling it closer to 118, 120, 130. So if we slow down the track, then the sample and the loop will sound closer to what the actual sample, the actual song sounds like. All right, vibey. There are better, in my opinion, there are better ways to warp than the beats default. I like Complex Pro, and then this would allow this this allows me to 
change the BPM. That allowed me to change the BPM and maintain the original key of the song. But if I wanted to re-pitch it, if I wanted to hear what it sounded like sped up or slowed down, I would go down here and click re-pitch. But be careful. Because we did all that warping, we have all these warp markers, this is gonna sound this is gonna sound a little weird. There is a way around it. But take a listen. Because we're changing the native BPM of the track every time we add a warp marker for those individual sections, when we re-pitch it jumps around to a bunch of different keys. So in order to get a more organic re-pitching, a more accurate one, we're gonna go back to Complex Pro, you know, low formats, turn the tracks uh, the, the track tempo to where uh, about where the sample's native tempo is, and it's about 131. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here. Select my 8 view, Command E, get rid of this, and I'm gonna Control J. And what that does is it consolidates it. So now this is a new audio clip. This is no longer the sample that we were manipulating. You see all the warp markers are gone, and now the segment BPM is exactly what the project segment BPM was. So now if we go down here, click Repitch, um, if we listen to it here, it, it sounds normal, but if we speed it up, It sounds higher, but without all the jumping around different keys. All right, that's pretty much it. Thanks for thanks for watching. Hope I helped, and make some dope music.